Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and welcome to Quick Shot Answers number three. So we've got another four questions for you. Let's get cracking. Okay, question number one comes from Steve Brackets Canada. Steve, are you the only Steve in Canada? Maybe, who knows? Um, I'll go there one day and I'll find out. Anyway, Steve Canada says, uh, Hi Gavin, my question is regarding sunsets. What tips do you have on finding the optimal balance between capturing the light, presumably you mean the sunset, uh, without compromising the detail of the foreground? Okay, yeah, a difficult one. You've got a high range of exposures between a sunset, which is actually quite bright, and a foreground subject, which is often in shadow. So what are you going to do? Well, three things, Steve. First one is take multiple exposures. Okay, so you're going to expose for the sunset, and you're going to expose for the foreground, and you're going to expose somewhere in the middle, and then you're going to use Photoshop or uh, Photoshop's, uh, what is it, merge to HDR Pro, or you're going to use uh, Photomatics or whatever to combine the three images together and get a lovely kind of uh, increased high dynamic range shot. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you could try getting it right in camera by using flash guns, using speed lights. So set a couple of speed lights up to illuminate the foreground and you can balance the foreground and the background. Depends what your foreground is, you may need quite a lot of speed lights. So number three is just accept that your foreground is gonna go dark. That's how it works. Make it a lovely silhouette, find something to put against the sunset, have a great silhouette image. Okay, let's go for another question. Question number two comes from Matthew, and Matthew says, I'm considering the purchase of Lightroom 3. I already have Photoshop CS5. What's the argument for buying Lightroom? I don't have arguments, Matthew. <laughs> What's the argument for buying Lightroom, given that it has the adjustment brush already found in Photoshop CS5? Okay, um, yeah, what are we gonna say? Well, let's, let's be honest. If you've got Photoshop CS5, you've already got the same engine that drives Lightroom 3. So, if you want to take a picture, put it into Photoshop CS5, make it look wonderful, great. Now, if you want to do that with 100 pictures, use Lightroom, because it's much, much quicker, so much faster at processing multiple images. Photoshop is about making one image and making it look fantastic. Lightroom is about taking lots of images and making them look fantastic. It's all about speed of workflow. You can also do other things like make little slideshows and make little um, uh, print collages of multiple images. So it's aimed at a different type of person. Okay, next question. Question number three comes from Simon Lunn and Simon says, I own a EOS 450D, that's a Canon, and I have an old tape video camera. Sweet. Uh, I was looking at buying a new HD video camcorder, but I noticed the Canon 60D is cheap and it shoots HD movies. I'm thinking of going semi-pro. So do you think I'd be better off with the 60D? Uh, if you're going semi-pro, buy the 60D. You agree, Jake? Jake agrees. Uh, if you're gonna go semi-pro for any reason, the 60D is a superb camera. Okay, that's stills photography. Let's talk video. If you're going to do video, if you're going to video your kids or your holidays, get a camcorder. Much, much easier. The problem with video on the 60D and all digital SLR cameras is you don't get autofocus, auto exposure once you've pressed the record button. And if you zoom the lens, which you have to do manually, you also lose focus and have to manually refocus. It makes stunning video quality, but you have to work at it. Okay, last question. Question number four comes from Amy, and Amy says, I want to know what settings for manual mode when you're shooting portraits with studio lighting. I always have shadows and sometimes highlights in my picture. That might be your lighting setup rather than anything else. You might want to work on how you set your lights up, Amy. But let's talk about settings on manual. Now in the studio, it's dead easy because all you're gonna do is you're gonna set your shutter speed to the sync speed of your camera. Check your camera's manual for that one or even just slightly below. Um, you're gonna put your ISO as low as you can, so 100 or 200. So that only leaves one thing. That only leaves the aperture. Now, if you're using one light, you can use the camera's histogram to work out the aperture and seeing whether you're over or underexposed because you're only ever gonna change the aperture. 
but if you're using multiple lights or as you move into uh, studio work, you're going to use, hang on, you're going to use one of these. There you go. There it is. That's my light meter. This is a Sekonic L308S. Had it for absolutely years. This thing only does one job. What it does is it works out the aperture. I tell it the shutter speed, I tell it the ISO, and it says use that aperture when the lights fire. Doesn't sound like much, but it saves a massive amount of time. So Amy, get yourself a light meter, flash meter. Okay, so there we go. That's another four quick shot answers done and dusted. If you've got a question of your own, go to my website, www.gavtrain.com, fill in the form, send it in to me, and the next video, I might be answering your question. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.